Today on the podcast, I'm having a really awesome conversation with Ellie Richter. Ellie is a life coach and a Psych K facilitator. We'll talk more about what that means in the podcast. And she describes her business as helping people to unblock their subconscious, heal the past, and co-create a downstream and purpose-driven life. If you have any interest in our brain and how the subconscious works when it comes to working with organizing clients or even on yourself, I know that you guys will really enjoy this interview. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast with Jen Obermeyer. Thank you for joining in. Jen makes it her mission to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. She is a devoted business coach and founder of the Inspired Organizer Program. Each week, you'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. And now, let's get started. Ellie, I am so glad that you're here today. I am so glad to be here. Yes. So, um... Incredible. Um, as I as I have already introduced, you're a life coach. Uh, you have such an interesting story, and I love this um, this heading on your about page on your website. Says, "I am a healer, spark plug for change, and my clients call me a compassionate bullshit cutter." <laughs> so tell me about that because I know a lot of professional organizers out there probably also describe themselves in a little bit of the same way. So tell us your story. Yeah, you know, I'm German, as you can hear from my accent. And, you know, I always notice that here living in the South, I live in South Carolina, Charleston, and people kind of go in a roundabout way about things. And I grew up going very direct. Mm. So I think the perception of me being a bullshit cutter comes from that. Because I, you know, and as a coach, or I'm a, I'm a psyche facilitator, so I help people change on the subconscious level. I, it is my job at times to point out something that you're not seeing. So if we're trying to be best friends with our clients, um, we're not necessarily serving you. We must be a mirror mm -hmm. to, for the person to see themselves and to see the stuff that they don't see. So I think that's where it's coming from. And I am very compassionate because, um, you know, I've experienced the depth of the dark nights of the soul. So I know that you don't need more self-discipline when you're struggling, but you need compassion. Yeah. So I do my best to let people know that it's not coming from a place of judgment or because I think I know better, mm -hmm. but from a place of deep understanding, like, hey, have you considered looking at yourself in this way? You know? Yeah. Um, I love what you just said there about people not needing more self-discipline when they're in a place, particularly, um, you know, clients who need help organizing their life. Like they, they don't want to invite somebody in to their private space that is going to amplify the feelings of like shame and disappointment that they already have for themselves. So like really the last thing that they need is somebody who's going to come along and say, well, here are the 10 best tips about yes. how to, you know, get your life together. And they're just like in on such a different, um, in, in, in a whole different mindset with that. What can you, what can you say, uh, you know, to the organizer who's like so worried about like proving everything that they know that they are kind of like, you know, preaching and like giving too much in that yeah. way. I love that you asked that two things come up for me. One is I think anyone that's in the business of helping another person, whether that's a doctor or a professional organizer or a coach or a therapist, um, there's a term we use in Psyche, which is sumatak, the sacred healing space where the number one assumption is that the person we're working with is powerful beyond measure and has all the answers inside. So there is all the pressure is off of us to, to show our worth or to show how much we know. And really what we want to do is hold the space for the person to empower themselves. Mm. That's one. And two when a client comes to me and, and they're really struggling and are feeling embarrassed and ashamed about that area in their lives, and I'm just going to assume that's the case for an organization coach, um, you know, it's a very vulnerable thing to be like, ah, oh, my closet is a mess, my finances are a mess, my everything is a mess. Yeah. You help them understand that it is not them 
but the conditioning. So, and this goes a little bit into science. So if you're okay, I'm going to just- Absolutely. Like, <laughs> please, please go into science. This is such okay. an awesome um, path. Yeah. Yeah. So you know how in the self-awareness, self-personal development world, there's, there's a strand we see where people own their shit. You know, they own it. But my, my concern with that is, is the, the identification with these patterns. So when we tear this apart a little bit, we come onto this earth perfectly magical and whole. So you don't, you're not born a disorganized person. You're not born an anxious person. You're not born an ashamed person. All of that is conditioned and learned. And so the mind comes into this lifetime as a blank canvas. And in the first seven years of our lives, we become imprinted and conditioned and programmed with certain belief patterns. And so if you grow up, with disorganized household and uh, and no value on organization that, or on the contrary, which is what's for me, I grew up, my father was very organized and always made us clean. And I went the, I rebelled the other way. So regardless though, it's a subconscious programming that drives the behavior. So I often tell my clients, listen, take the shame and the pressure off. It is not you who's disorganized. It's your conditioning and your programming that's leading you to have a manifestation of this disorganization in your life. As soon as you rewire your mindset and your thinking and really change that, then it's going to come effortlessly. So I like to remind people that the I, like it's not I am disorganized. It's like my conditioning has caused me to have this pattern in my life. And when we share it like that, we still take responsibility for changing it without the shame. Mm. That makes sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Let me cut right to the heart of something that I think a lot about is let's turn this not to our organizing clients, but I want to turn this to our organizers out there. A lot of them identify themselves as having been organized their whole life. And that was something that they enjoyed doing even as a child. And then now that they have, you know, come to whatever stage of life they're in now, and they've realized that like, you know, that they can make money as a professional organizer. And this is a way that they can use their sort of their own, like they use organizing as like a coping mechanism for themselves. And they're like, oh, this is a way I can be productive and help other people with it. So they kind of, it's like, you know, the organizers and the clients who are disorganized, like kind of find each other and they sort of, you know, believe that they're going to have this harmonious relationship. Here's my question for you. What are your thoughts on being a professional organizer that is able to use her gifts without slipping into this like rescuing mode where she's coming in and sort of taking over, not taking over, but, um, coming in and just expecting to be able to fix all the problems in someone else's home and then therefore their life. That's a great question. I think it's always challenging for anyone, regardless of your training or your gifts to see, to understand a person that didn't grow up organized, you know, didn't grow up loving that. Yeah. So meeting a person where they are requires also some inner changes in you. So I think what comes up for me is that every coach needs a coach. And so if you're, (laughs) if you're a coach and you're struggling being compassionate and you're struggling or you're, you're noticing that you're pushy and kind of coming in with that masculine energy and trying to fix and rescue and you are met with a lot of resistance you may want to take a look at yourself and take a look at are you comfortable with your own emotions and are you comfortable with other people's emotions because again when we tear this apart isn't it about emotions yeah isn't it about what really goes on in the soul when it comes to organization i can look around in my house and when there's a mess i know it's a reflection of some kind of inner mess Mm -hmm. so a lot of times when and i'm assuming that a lot of organizers are females but a lot of women are also conditioned to be in their masculine energy, to rescue and to fix. The reality is it doesn't feel good for a woman to be in that energy. So if you find yourself frustrated and kind of like, God, my clients are not listening and da, 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 you may want to take a look. Am I mass, am I, am I mostly using my masculine energy for that? And you may want to look around in your life. Am I doing that in my relationships? Am I doing that with my health? Am I using this force? 
this upstream force or am I allowing and receptive? So I do think that is something within the coach that you may want to look at, you know, and not to say it's wrong or there's something bad with that, but anytime in my experience that I came from a place of rescuing and fixing, I didn't feel good. I didn't enjoy the process. I got out of the session and was thinking, God, I just really didn't enjoy myself, you know? So yeah. I, I do think that when it's a win-win and when you hold that sacred space and you remember that the person has the answers within and you remember that the person, despite the outer circumstances, is powerful beyond measure and most importantly, equal, you know, that we're yeah. equal there. So I think that doing inner work as a coach, facilitator, therapist is always a great idea. Um, you know, I, I always do that to look at where my, where my blind spots are uh, and that by no means perfect. And at the same time, the, having a willingness to look at that. And ultimately, if you feel good doing that and if you're successful doing that and you feel good doing that, keep doing it. If you don't feel good and you're bumping up against rub, that rubbing with your clients and you may want to take a look at the masculine versus feminine energy within yourself. Mm. I hope that answered your question. Uh, absolutely. Well, I think we could talk for days about this <laughs> um, because I think that what I see with people who are maybe almost like over, um, um, over investing their emotional energy and, you know, really expecting to be able to essentially do the work for their clients when really their clients are the ones that ultimately have to be in charge of their own change is that those are the organizers who get really burned out even though they're actually very, very capable at what they do is that they don't have really great boundaries. So, I mean, we could probably talk about boundaries for three more days, but what would you say about, um, learning boundaries, particularly when you're, you know, you're, you're, you're it was something like organizing. Here's what's interesting is you, okay. Say you get, you get called for, a project that seems like it's just about the project, but then there's like always layers of like, what is the thing behind the thing? Like, why are like, why has this become the problem? Like, let's say it's just, it's a messy closet or a messy office and somebody calls you and is like, okay, I need help to fix this. And so somebody goes into their, like their fixing mode and they're like organizing. This is what I'm great at. I want to be on a timetable. I want to deliver great results. I want the client to be super happy. And the client says something like, oh yeah, you know, I'm ready to just come in here and just knock it out. But then they get in there and the, the organizer is not quite ready for, like you said, some of the emotional stuff that starts to come up. And then the organizer's like, well, I can't fit in as many clients as I thought I'd be able to, because this doesn't go as quickly as I thought. And then they get really invested in like the, the emotional side and they're not able to walk away on time. And it's kind of like, there's, there's so many, um, layers that, a, that a, an organizer has to be competent at recognizing and, um, so, you know, setting, setting some personal boundaries so that they don't sort of just get entangled in the client's life. Does that make sense? Absolutely. You know, when I think back at the first, I I've been doing, I've been held in the business of helping people since I'm 19 at first as a physical therapist, then as a health coach, because my degree wasn't transferred. I think you read that in my bio. And then when I immigrated and then, um, I created my own business as a holistic life coach. And my subconscious programming at that time was still hardwired to fix and rescue because wow. in my subconscious, I wasn't comfortable feeling my own feelings and I wasn't comfortable with other people's feelings. It wasn't until I started doing subconscious work that I was really able to hold space and not dive into the hole with people, mm -hmm. but hold that sacred sumatak space. So having that said, you know, I do feel sad for all the years that I, that I basically was like an overbearing mom to my client, you know? And I, I know that there is like hundreds of people right now raising their hand and they're like, oh my gosh, this is me. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's part of the growth for us as, uh, as holding of space people. And yeah. I have two recommendations. And again, I'm a fan of Psyche, which is the fastest and the most efficient way to change your subconscious mind. But there are other methods like, NLP, EMDR, and hypnosis. And these are the common methods right now that address the 95% of our mind that actually create our reality. So most tools that we give and most methods that people apply are conscious. So uh, 
two suggestions then. Either get some psyche or receive some psyche with a facilitator or hypnosis or NLP or EMDR so you can work on your own discomfort with emotions and learn to actually hold space so that you not only have to that you don't have to fight setting boundaries and use a lot of conscious effort but that it comes natural that it's really just in your conditioning to not go past a certain point and to just really stick to your work that's mm -hmm. one or two which i think is is a really affordable and, and effective way get your basic training in psyche so that in the moments of where you are noticing and becoming aware that your client really has a subconscious block there meaning that it's a pattern within them that you can help them on the spot so maybe you can up level your skill level as an organizing coach by adding this method so lots of people i meet in the trainings for psyche are nurses doctors uh, healthcare practitioners that incorporate that into their profession um, so those would be the two suggestions that I have, but ultimately it comes down to, can you watch someone cry without feeling like you have to do something about it? Not because you're cold or uninterested or discompassionate, but because you know that it's okay for the person to cry. It's yeah. a necessary part. You, you wear all the sky and everything else is the weather. The emotions are the weather. And so can you hold that sacred sumatak space for them to come to wherever they need to come to? And I think that's a valuable skill for anyone that's in the helping business to just be able to hold that space. And if you need to do a little bit of subconscious work on that, I'd say go for it. If you even want to be able to do that subconscious work with other people, go for it. You know, we always need to continue to grow our skill set because as you're recognizing these things in your profession, that's wonderful because it's just another thing to grow through personally and then to, to be able to help others with that. You know, any coach that I know, we're always kind of looking for how else can I help? How else can I serve? So one thing that I was thinking from our conversation, even the awareness for you as you're listening, that there is a subconscious mind, that you can touch it, that you can really rewire it. And the fact that most coaches throw conscious tools at subconscious problems. You know, wow. Just, okay. That is worth writing down. Everybody listening, write that down. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm the first one to admit that's been, that's been my life. I was like, uh, self-care used to be half of my life. I mean, there was like a part-time job, you know, just to manage uh, how I felt before and after sessions. And that's no longer the mm. case. So I was close to a burnout before I came to Psyche. And I'm so grateful that I found a way to completely change and transform my way of being and then share that with others. So I'm feeling enthusiastic about this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So t tell us more about the details about Psych K. Mm -hmm. So people, people, for people who are listening, what we're saying is psych, like psychology, psych, and then it's dash the letter K. Yes. So mm -hmm. Psych K, can you just explain what it is and then what happens during a Psych K session with another person? Mm -hmm. So Psych K has been around for 30 years. And it's up to date, the fastest and most effective way to transform the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is 95% of our mind. So only 5% is that little piece that we're aware of where we have these conscious ahas, like, or we read a book, or we do talk therapy, or we do positive affirmations or positive thinking. All of these methods are wonderful, and they touch only the 5% of our mind. Now, the subconscious mind learns in a very different way. And they are, there's these methods that I mentioned, NLP, hypnosis, EMDR, that also touch the subconscious mind. And so do certain meditation techniques or breath work. So there's been, there are some things that touch this. What I love about Psyche is that you, as the person that we're doing this with, decide what you want to rewire. So you're fully awake for the process. It's not in a deep meditative state or in some sort of altered state. So let's say you come in and you say, I'm so disorganized. And you tell me everything you've been trying to do and how it makes you feel. And then we just decide to keep it simple. And I ask you, okay, what do you want instead? And then you create a statement. For example, it's easy for me to be organized in every area of my life. And then we do what's called a whole brain balance. So we, we do an exercise that's relatively difficult to explain in this verbal way, yeah. but there's a video in my Instagram link that you can watch where there's a demo of that. Um, but there's basically whole brain exercises 
where you rewire this new belief and afterwards there's a post test after this exercise where you get confirmation that it worked and it's one and done so from now on in the 95 percent of your mind you believe it's easy for me to be organized in all areas of my life now this is a rather superficial thing the reason i love it the most is uh the subconscious mind is always in the present moment so it has no concept of past present and future so say you had a traumatic event when you were five and you may not think about it every day, but it created a fear in you about certain things or it created the, it created the sense that you are not good enough. Mm -hmm. And so every time you hear a sound, a smell, or have a feeling that reminds you of that time, it, everything from that time will basically become your reality. You feel that again. So lots of people experienced a lot of trauma not just abuse, but also trauma can be a move. Trauma can be a, a switch in school. It can be being bullied. It can be a breakup or divorce or loss or financial change. And in the subconscious mind, unless you clear that with subconscious method, that stuff is going to continuously show up for you. And you have no idea why you're feeling anxious or depressed. Mm -hmm. And with like, hey, we can balance these past traumatic and stressful events so that when you think about it, you feel just peace, non-attachment. And it's been amazing what it's been allowing people to do. So that, that's kind of how it works. So it brings your brain into what we call a whole brain state where your conscious mind and your subconscious mind are, in, like, are on board about whatever belief or whatever perception you are balancing. So you can change your perception about the past. You can change your perception about the future and you can rewire new and more supportive beliefs into your subconscious. I mean, it's just amazing. I hope I'm explaining it in a way that it, it's really exciting. <laughs> um, no, it's, well, it's really interesting to me. Um, um, and I might have a little bit more experience or past understanding than some of my listeners about it. But when you say it's fast, I mean, this is like a, like you said, like a five or 10 minute process, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and it's not something like with psychotherapy that you have to keep going back for long periods of time. And it costs a lot of money and it's a lot of investment where you're like reinvestigating all those old stories. Like this is very in the moment, mm -hmm. practical. And I know a lot of organizers out there, like they, they like practical solutions. And so I think that's why um you know it is really interesting and it is a really good fit with um y with them you know wanting to have some tools and techniques for themselves and also potentially to share with their clients i completely agree i mean my brain is wired to look for effective things yeah um, because i think the truth is always simple and if it's complicated it can't be the truth and i'm not the biggest fan of psychoanalysis because then people walk around and you can tell that they have been to a psychoanalysis and they just analyze themselves and they don't, they, their mind is not free to live their lives. Mm. And that's suffering to me, you know, and I've, I know my purpose is to help people end their suffering. Um, and it hurts my heart to see the world suffer in a way where it, we don't have to, we don't have to suffer that way. And it doesn't have to be difficult. And we live in very exciting times where we have neuroscientific awareness yeah. of how the brain works and that we can change it. You know, it's mm. very exciting. I think that what you just said about being aware that the brain, uh, I mean, a lot of people now I think are very commonly aware of like a growth versus a fixed mindset, but they haven't quite connected that. Okay. If our brain is really the thing that is running the whole entire show, that isn't there some value in doing some of these things that work directly with the uh, with the level of beliefs not like you said throwing conscious solutions at subconscious problems so that's why i'm starting to see that this is not all like crazy woo woo stuff like it's really truly like you said based in science and um and it's something that um helps sort of install a new program into the the thing that really matters which is like our, our brain and and it's in charge of everything yeah, and you know what is so beautiful? People come in initially wanting more money, a better body, better health, better relationships, <laughs> yeah. and they end up really having a spiritual awakening. So, um, you know, it is called a spiritual method with psychological benefits. So, you know, you, you may come initially in and you're like, I want to make a million dollars and I want to have this and this, and there's nothing wrong with that by any means. However, we'll discover 
that happiness truly is that inside job, you know, mm. and we'll discover that you can tell yourself all day long, I'm good enough and I'm worthy. If your subconscious mind operates on the contrary programming, you'll actually create more disharmony and more suffering by using positive affirmations. So a lot of people would, you know, have tried yeah. the law of attraction or positive thinking and just ending up more frustrated, really believing it's not working when really it's only it, it, the law of attraction and positive thinking only works when you have the programming also in your subconscious. Mm -hmm. So if I subconsciously believe I'm good enough and then I consciously read that, say on Instagram, a little reminder, then all my bells is going to go off and I'm like, yes. And then I'm operating from that way again. But if, if that is not in our subconscious and most people don't grow up believing they're good enough at some point, something happened in the first zero to 14 years that affects our self-worth where we decide I don't deserve, I'm not worthy and deserving of the best that life and love have to offer. So mm -hmm. you start operating from a low self-worth point and you start making low self-worth choices. You can positive think yourself until you're green in the face. It's not going to make a difference. And not because positive thinking doesn't work, but it only works when you also have the subconscious programming to support it. This is fascinating. It what really is. is. <laughs> what, do you what do you recommend? Like when people first kind of catch a glimpse of this and they're like, this is great. I need to read more. I want to, I want to know more about the neuroscience part. Like what resources are like go-to resources for you? Um, you know, I'm not a, I kind of jumped into this like face first. So okay. I <laughs> Dr. Dr. Bruce Lipton, Dr. Okay. Bruce Lipton has some, it's, but it's dense, you know, and it stretches, it will stretch your mind. I've had, I've had a very dear person near to me, basically say it's all con artists, woo woo shit. So you may have that perception. Sure. Um, Dr. Joe Dispenza, another great resource. And then Rob Williams, the creator of Psyche. Um, my, I'm always an experiential person. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've got to be open and curious to explore something like that because of course it challenges all of our conditioning because we've been conditioned to believe and we even glorify the struggle and we glorify working hard for something. You know, when, when you see a person being like, I worked really hard at this and I took so and so many years and so and so many hours, we're like, yeah, you know, yeah. And <laughs> it's weird. It's, it's also a conditioning, you know, how much we glorify the struggle. So some people, are, it's just not for them because their beliefs don't allow for the possibility that change is possible fast and easy. I've had very few people, but it happens, get mad at the presentation that you can change this right now, permanently, forever. And of course, we as Psyche facilitator, you want to be really mindful not to overpromise and underdeliver. Mm -hmm. Everyone is on their journey. It's not about me. It's not about Psyche. But um, if you want to read more about the brain, I think Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Bruce Lipton, and Rob Williams are great po points to start, you know? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I love just with your basic premise, like you said, you start off like organizing does start in the mind. And would you say that it's our, st our story about, or I guess it could be multiple things, our story about, um, you know, being good at it or being bad at it, or, um, you know, the self-worth part of it where I deserve to have a whole and comforting environment or somebody's story that they don't deserve it. Like what are, what are some of the, the different ways that you can see this playing out specifically when it comes to people who recognize that their disorganization is a problem, but they haven't quite maybe connected that it has anything to do with like multiple levels going on yeah i think listening and asking questions you know allowing the person to recognize you know you can even say what area of your life do you think does your closet represent or mm. um you know just kind of curious questions um where did you learn this habit your mom your dad someone else how did you grow up what were the first 14 years of your life kind of explaining to them our beliefs and our habits and our patterns form in the first 14 years of our lives and if nobody taught you to be organized it may just be a lack of knowledge but if for example your your parents uh, punished you about being disorganized and you were like me reveling and then just yeah. once i moved out i mean my first my first bedroom 
that when I moved in with my with a with a partner at that time, it was literally clothes on the floor, so you couldn't even walk through there because. Yeah. I had, I've been like, I want to be free. I don't want anybody to tell me what to do. I didn't put two and two together that it made me feel bad to disorganize. So even just asking, how does it make you feel to look yeah. at the room, you know, and how would you like to feel instead? What do you want instead? So yeah. you don't have to play therapist or coach, right. but just asking curious questions to help the person connect the dots. It's most empowering when the person can connect her or his dots for themselves versus you psychoanalyzing them and then telling you, this is my analysis, you know? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Cause I, I mean, I think it's important to recognize that not everybody wants to dive deep and do like all kinds of like subconscious work and that's okay. And that's what I think is really kind of fulfilling about the organizing industry is that you can be somebody who has a philosophy that is, you know, much more, like you said, we're just dealing with the present objects and the, the project and the clutter. And then other people who are, are, are more holistic in their approach, but like all of those things are sort of valid because no matter what, you are assisting another human being in moving towards their desired outcome. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it's also that the reality is we've all experienced this. If you change one small aspect, mm -hmm. whether that's a new haircut or an organized room, it does for the time being for a hot second, mute your subconscious and you feel renewed energy. Oh, and so yeah. it's all about building that momentum for a person. You know, some, totally. it, we, we think the solutions have to be so complicated, but remember the truth is always simple. One small change does really build momentum. Mm -hmm. And so for those of you that are like, this is just, I don't want to deal with this. I just want to focus on this. We're, <laughs> yeah. doing, we're doing great, very important work. Yeah. And just leave it at that. Just rock it, own it. You know, for those of you looking at it more holistic, uh, you may want to get a method like Psyche into your toolbox so that you can really help the person on a, on a true profound level and don't have to do a lot of the talking about it because mm. once you open that door for a person good luck <laughs> you know like <laughs> then then it becomes talk therapy and you're not really going anywhere because again you can't subconscious mind doesn't change the way the conscious mind changes you know wow that's actually really interesting because that is a common sort of um uh, like I said earlier, when someone, when an organizer is not really expecting how badly a client wants to tell their story, then that's where they're stuck. And they're just like, am I doing my job when I'm letting them, you know, talk about their past and, you know, you're going through like, uh, you know, photo albums or people's things and they, they want to tell you the history or they want to tell you what it reminds you of. And, and I'm always like, yeah, yeah, you're doing your job. Like that was, that's, who are you to decide what the one most single important part of your time together was? Because often people do just need that space to be able to, um, to tell a piece of their history or a piece of their, um, you know, emotional attachment to an item before they can let it go. Like that's a part of the releasing process. Absolutely. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting. The attachments we have, I would recommend in this case, listening. And when they're finished saying, thank you so much for sharing. I, I can see that it's challenging to let this go when you're ready. Mm -hmm. And, and I would not go into analyzing any of that. So all we need right. is to be heard and to be validated. And then I would shift you know, the, the quickest and most easiest and simplest shift is, so oh, now what do you want instead? Yeah. What do you want instead? So that we just kind of really bring it back to the here now. You know, I, I can see that it means a lot to you. So what do you want? Mm -hmm. You know, just always giving it back and keeping it that simple, you know, um, because the person knows what they want. And th there are some people that need to sleep on every, on every decision. So I can see that with a client that has a tough time deciding, um, those would be the kind of clients that Psyche is really great. I do a lot of balances with clients around decision-making, mm. trusting their intuition. So if you have one of those people that are so like wishy-washy indecisive, you could come in and quickly help them rewire that so that they can make their decisions easier and just be like, yo, getting rid of that. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. So that sounds like a very exciting prospect for a lot of our listeners. So um, very cool. Okay. Ellie, tell everybody, please, where can they find 
you online more about like what it is that you offer and the site case stuff, the coaching stuff, like give us all the details. Yeah. I usually, you know, part of my mental health organization is I'm only on Instagram. So Perfect. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Just pick one. Yeah. Just pick one. You know, um, because I also co-own a meditation studio. So the two okay. my businesses, I, th that's the only platform I truly enjoy. Yeah. So you can find information in my Instagram bio. Um, you can always set up a call with me. And then there's my website linked as well, ellierichter.com. Um, I put a couple of videos about Psyche in my Instagram link. Um, you know, when you research that, not all of this stuff is helpful. It has been around for 30 years, so some of the videos are older. So especially if you're a young bunny, you're a modern young bunny, and you're used to, like, glossy videos, um, it's not necessarily, like, super glossy. But the information is fantastic. So mm -hmm. if you can get over the, the optics, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just watch some of the videos. You know, and I feel like the personal experience is always the best way. So you may want to just like reach out to someone if you want to do it in person, but it works great over the phone. It works great over Skype. So about 40% of my clients live all over the world. Um, yeah. And, and you can get certified. What I love about this, this isn't, this isn't about, you know, it's not like about Ellie. It's not like I'm the guru or I'm the healer. I actually need to take that off my website that I consider myself a healer because I okay. don't, okay. you know, I, I, I hold space. Yeah. So yeah. it's an attack, you know, psyche is all I do. And so you, you are the healer of yourself. Mm. Um, that must have been old content. So I'm organizing my website. <laughs> it's, it, we're, we're always like a work in progress. So yeah, that's okay. Totally, totally. <laughs> yeah. But you know, that's my last point. I feel like, you know, for some people, they may say they want to get organized, but then they realize it's not top priority. Yeah. Because, you know, there's such a thing than bandwidth. And especially if you have a young mother or someone that just like birthed a business or is going through transition, our nervous system is so in fight, flight, freeze. We just don't even have the bandwidth. Yeah. So then you may want to just coach that person to accept the mess and to call that, you know, call me when you're ready, when you have the bandwidth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, just accept where you are and focus on one step at a time. You know, I sometimes feel like that's also appropriate coaching, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Ellie, this was really, um, eye opening. And I know that every single person probably learned something new today, um, that they can apply to their business, their life, like open their eyes to, you know, things that might be going on with the clients that they just couldn't figure out what, what, or why. Hopefully they, they walked away today with a sense that there, there's nothing wrong with them either. Um, you know, that they're doing their absolute best at any given point in time as our, our clients. Um, I thought it was really beautiful how you described some of that. Um, so thank you so much for coming thank on the podcast. So yeah, I really appreciate it. And it's ironic given my past of being extremely disorganized. So <laughs> when you reached out, I was like, wow, this is going to be so interesting. So I really appreciate the opportunity to share about something that I love and yeah. to interconnect with other coaches and to all of you listening, I think it's amazing what you're doing and the world needs you. So Absolutely. thank you for all that you do. Yeah, very, very cool. Thank you so much, Ellie. Thank you, love. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about time-saving services and resources for professional organizers, visit www.proorganizerstudio.com. And if you'd like to get Jen's roadmap to success for launching and growing your professional organizing business, go straight to www.poroadmap.com.